What is happening YouTubers? Thanks for tuning back into the channel here. Me, the Rust Belt Mechanic. We've got the Duramax back in the shop tonight. We're gonna be doing a couple really cool things for it. Uh, we're gonna be doing some HD tie rod ends. We're gonna be doing some explaining on those and the relativity, relativity to my lift kit, as well as some really cool tools that I got from Tack Life. We're gonna go over those as well and show you guys what it takes to do a full alignment on a lifted Duramax. Hope you guys enjoy, stay tuned. So one of the big headaches that I ran into when lifting my truck, we went with the BDS 7 inch suspension lift, not the coil over, over style, but the standard suspension lift, Fox 2.0 shocks. So we really would have liked to add some HD tie rod ends at the time that we lifted the truck. However, we ran into a hiccup. These HD tie rod ends that we picked up from PPE, these things are gigantic. Big Mamma Jam is about three and a half times the diameter of the standard factory ones and about five times the strength of them. These things weigh a freaking ton, but they can handle, you know, twisting these things in with a four wheel drive launch with 37 inch tires. They're big for a reason. Well, the issue that we had was when adding the different spindles on the front of this truck for this specific lift kit, it changed the steering angles a little bit. And what I mean by steering angles was it pulled them in a little bit. So the spindles, they were actually at a narrower portion. So when you put these tie rod ends on, all of a sudden your toes, your toe was like way towed out. You couldn't get everything lined up straight. You had these uh, tie rod ends turned all the way in. They couldn't turn in anymore and you still towed out. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So. We got with BDS, they told us, well, you're not gonna be able to go with those. So we put the factory ones back on, and even with those, we only have about three quarters of an inch of thread left on those. So what did we have to do? We actually had to trim these down. This is how much we actually had to trim off the PPE tie rod ends. And I know you guys can give me all kinds of shit for cutting up a set of $300 tie rods, $400 tie rods, but it's what we had to do to get them to fit. We put a nice little beveled edge on them so you can't even really tell how much it was cut. We just unthreaded it from the inner portion, cut about an inch and a half off, and then that will give us just the amount of adjustment we need to keep these things nice and strong and able to fit the ride how we want them. So we're gonna get these put on and then we're gonna go f through our full alignment process for you guys and We'll see how it goes. So just to put into perspective the actual size difference between these things, it's quite astonishing. You know, this is you. This is the guy that your wife told you not to worry about. These things are gigantic, absolute monsters. So there's a reason that these things can hold huge amounts of torque. They're absolute beasts. So. We're gonna leave the big tires on here and I think we can get these tie rod ends pulled off. All we're gonna have to do is take off this big 19 millimeter nut here and then pop it off of the spindle and then the big nut there on the inner tie rod end, get a little light shine in there, is gonna be able to spin off the inner tie rod sleeve that goes across to the other side. All in all, pretty easy. So we got our old tie rod end off. This is the factory one. It took a 21 millimeter nut here on this end to take the outer tie rod end off. And then you're gonna have to work hard to find some bigger wrenches for this job, guys. You're gonna need a 36 millimeter to take the inner tie rod end off. But then once you step it up to this big man majama, you're gonna need to find a full two inch 
wrench to get this thing on and off the inner tie rod. Like I said, these things are crazy huge. Got her all installed, torqued into place. Uh, the nut that came with the PPE tie rod kit was a 22 and not a 21. And then our giant two inch attachment nut for the this to the inner tie rod. Look at that compared to the other side with just these wee babies. They look so cute, don't they? <laughs> All right, we're gonna get the other side all swapped out and then we will get into our full alignment process. So earlier on in the video, I don't know if you guys saw with the tie rod ends here on my cart, but I did have a pile of tools. Uh, one of the guys who has reached out to me has been the guys over at Tact Life. They are a tool manufacturer. They produce tools uh, that are quite a bit more inexpensive than the snap-on ones that I use every day. And it would be good for you guys who are just a quick DIY style. So first off in the line, we have a $15 Torx or Allen bit set. It comes in either one. Uh, these things have a pretty decent warranty and they hold up pretty well. They're not gonna hold up in my everyday shop use, but if for you guys who are wanting a, uh, a good hex or Allen bit set to have at home or in the toolbox of the truck, that would be something great for you. This one is just the standard, or just the metric bit, and then you step it up just a little bit for $37, you get the metrics and the standards, both. That is a 37 piece set, and it goes all the way up to a three quarter inch in the uh, standards, a 19 millimeter in the metrics. Really big comprehensive set. And then one of the best ones that you guys could have in your truck is going to be the 45 piece set here. This one is all the sockets in standards, metrics, deep and shallow. You got two extensions, got a swivel, and both styles of spark plug sockets as well. Uh, the thing that I do like about it, the wrench, the ratchet that you have, it is a 72 tooth ratchet. So for a more cost effective ratchet, this thing is not too bad at all. I don't like that it is the bass backwards style switching, but I can get over that for the cost of this one at $46 for this set. 46 bucks for an awesome truck tool pack. You can't really beat that one. Also, they were awesome enough to get me a couple of coupon codes as well. I'll be putting those down in the description. Each one of those with my coupon codes are gonna give you guys 10% off. And like I said, you can pick these up at Amazon so they get delivered right to your house. Let's get back over to the truck now. So if anybody knows these Hunter alignment machines, they come with these four heads. We have the uh, Hunter Hawkeye Elite alignment machine here. It's gonna allow us to do a really good job on pretty much any kind of alignment we have. Lifted truck, lowered car, whatever you do. These things are pretty awesome. Each one of these heads, we're gonna have to align on each of the wheels. We've got a spacer because we got some big ass wheels that we've got to space out. So we'll get these installed first. So now that we've got the heads all set up on the truck, uh, we're gonna start our alignment machine up and then we have to do what they call a compensation. We have to turn the truck and actually roll it forward, you know, about a foot or so, so the alignment machine can read those heads that are mounted to each of the wheels and get just the baseline set up for what the alignment is on the truck. After that, we're gonna do what they call a caster sweep. We're gonna turn the front wheels back and forth to allow the machine to get a compensation of where the wheels are at for our caster and our camber. So let's set it up real quick. So what we're gonna do first is we've got all the heads set up on the alignment machine and we're gonna roll the actual truck forward. When we roll it forward, you're gonna see these arrows start to move forward into the green zone. That will allow the machine to know that we're all compensated forward and backward. So we'll do that real quick. Thank you. 
So now because we put the tie rod ends off, we are quite a bit off. So we have to set everything up so it's semi close first. So we'll get that one turned into place. We'll get the total toe set and the steer head so it's somewhat close for the machine. Now that we've got our general compensation set, we're going to have to do a compensation for our caster and camber, which means we're going to have to turn the wheels to do a sweep so the machine can read exactly where it sweeps in the caster and camber range, just like this. guys now that we've got that all set up we can see where we're at generally speaking we've got our steering wheel locked in place so it is straight so if you were going straight down the road that's where we're, we're going to want our steering wheel at so our toe is out pretty equally on both sides and then our camber is out pretty good on the right hand side we're going to adjust that one in the camber is the tilt of the wheel as it is up we're going to actually let's grab the camera and see if we can see how bad this one is Not terribly bad. One degree isn't going to show that much, but since we've got everything somewhat straight, it's not going to be that bad. So we'll go back over here and we're going to start with our uh, camber alignment. Here with the camber alignment, we're going to do an illustration to show exactly what we're going to do. The upper control arms on this, and we'll go over to it, have little cam bolts that we're able to turn that will pull in or out our upper control arm to adjust the camber let's go over to that side and have a look so you can see on this side we've got nice shiny fancy hardware from when we put in the new upper control arms but they're the gold bits they are our camber and caster adjustment cams we're going to loosen that nut up and we're going to be able to turn this side to be able to pull the control arm uh, in just a slight amount to pull our camber into place. And because our caster is correct, we're gonna be doing it equally to both sides. If our caster was off, we would be likely just adjusting one or the other in or out, you know, difference from each other. But because our caster is the same, we just need to adjust camber. The whole wheel needs to come in or out equally. So we'll have to do equally to each side. So here we are, we're gonna loosen this nut up a little bit. Whoa there, a little bit too far. actually not going to be too bad so that is going to be close on that side and then we need to bring our caster in on the front one so now we've got everything tightened back down and our caster and camber are both in spec for that side so now we've got to go back to adjusting our toe so to adjust our toe right here on this section here the threaded part of the inner tie rod end we're going to turn that one and that will bring in this or out the sleeve to adjust our total toe. All right, so then we've got that all taken care of. Our toe, caster, and camber are in spec on this side. So now we all we have to do is tighten up our lock nut right there, and this side is all done. But in general, that 
is a front end alignment. We just got to fix the other side and make that dead in and that's going to be it. So when all is said and done, everything looks pretty happy green on our alignment machine and our alignment is done. Everyone say hi Brandon. <laughs> you almost said hi Brandon. <laughs> so everything's all in line. We're going to get the heads off and we're going to take it for a test drive. Make sure we are all hunky-dory, steering wheel straight, and good to go. So I hope this gave you guys a really good sense on when you need to replace those crappy stock tie rod ends, and then you have to get a full alignment, what you're actually paying for when you take it to the alignment shop. So when you're complaining about, oh, I gotta pay like $99.95 for an alignment, well, when this guy's doing Big lifted trucks, the alignments are kind of a pain. You know, you're using bigger tools, you gotta pay for that. These alignment sheet machines are not cheap. This rack alone is like 20 grand. This alignment machine with the heads and everything, they're like 25 grand. So they have to pay for themselves in that aspect. So when you're paying the money for an alignment, that is exactly what you are getting. So hopefully you guys have a little better understanding for what goes on in that and hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of content. I know I do, appreciate it. Make sure you guys check out the tools that I showed you earlier. Uh, if you guys like, I will also remember to check out the uh, coupon codes that I will also throw down in the description. Also be sure to check me out over on Facebook. I do have a page over there where I sell my little decals for Rust Belt Mechanic. I also post almost daily over on Instagram. And if you guys want to keep up with me daily, keep up with the latest, greatest things, make sure you check me out over there at the Rust Belt Mechanic. Thanks again for tuning in today, guys. Appreciate you guys joining me on this journey. You guys stay awesome.